Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another virtual edition of Mike Up Sports, the show that goes in depth with the people who build our sports community. And joining me all the way from her place somewhere in Minnesota is Molly Casper, the head coach of Eastview Girls Basketball, finished up her fifth season, if my research is correct, has a state championship to her credits. And the two of us have something in common. We're both trying to fill the gap without sports, but a lot of stories we're going to share in this conversation. Molly, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. Awesome that you're doing this with, with all the downtime. <laughs> yeah, so and speaking of downtime, I know you and I both have an affinity for baseball, softball. You've talked about once of all the stadiums you've visited uh, in your lifetime, and normally I would have been working with Major League Baseball as a StatCast operator, so... What have you been doing with this time away from sports? Um, you know, still thinking about sports, just kind of um, trying to make myself better, reading some books. Um, always try to think of different ways, leadership ways, try to make it active. Um, and really just, I guess, trying to play sports with my kids, which isn't a bad thing either. And, um, you know, my youngest at four, we bought a new basketball hoop because we moved this year and um, she made her first hoop um you know basket on our seven and a half foot hoop so that's kind of been the the exciting thing in our household so trying to trying to keep sports alive just um in a different uh, capacity i guess so she made her first tube so in about 10 years are we going to be hearing about her first uh, division one offer yeah <laughs> i don't think we'll we'll probably be sharing that I mean, that's a little overdone but um you know hopefully she just enjoys it and has fun with it and right now I think she might be a dancer but um she loves Eastview and the girls that play and she screams go lightning when she shoots and she's a little lefty so that would be a little different but um you know so and whatever she chooses I'm sure she'll have a lot of fun with it and to be clear I'm not making any statement or proclamation we're just having a little fun uh, because yeah. of our <laughs> history with basketball well you came to us by way of Wisconsin, if I recall. So when did you get your first itch to play sports? And give us a little history uh, as you were a rising star over in the Badger State. Um, yeah, I think I just uh, played sports my whole life. Kind of, I guess I'm considered old school now, um, where we just played. Nothing was as organized. Um, you know, my cousin would pick me up. We'd go down to the Y and we'd play one-on-one -on -one for three hours and you know he was never easy on me and he was two years older and you know we just we just played and just loved it me and my cousin growing up played one-on-one -on -one hockey and we used um crushed cans as our hockey puck and you know I mean that's just um how I grew up and um yeah from there just kind of kept getting better and then slowly um fell in love with the sports that I played and was lucky enough to play three sports in high school and try a bunch of different things and um, yeah, and so kind of continued on from there and, and just kind of kept falling in love with every sport for the most part. Um, but basketball's always been um, the one that I wanted to play further. And what were the three sports that you played in high school? Um, I played tennis, um, basketball, and softball. Um, up until middle school, I played volleyball um, and then made the switch over to tennis. And um, yeah. And how do you think that multi-sport participation helped you across all three sports? Um, I think it just gave me a uh, different leadership. It wasn't always the same coach or the same situation. Uh, tennis was sometimes more individual, but then also I played, I went to state in partners. And so partners was always my favorite because I wanted to be with other people. And um, I really actually enjoyed tennis because it, it gave me like a three week break before basketball tryout. So it wasn't as back to back to back. Um, but also unique. So it just built different areas of my mental um, game of being, I think, a leader and also um, a player. And then athletically, it just forced me to use my body in different ways that, um, you know, wasn't just the same consistency over and over and over again. Um, and I grew up mostly just playing instead of just training. Like it was just, you know, always just let's go play, go play, go play, not let's go sit and just train for a specific skill. And I ask that because I've met a few tennis basketball crossovers in my coverage, and they mention how it helps with the athleticism, lateral movement, you're going left to right. And as you said, it 
presents a different level of focus and training than basketball does. And I imagine it, you benefited from that, not only having a three-week break, but getting to play another sport that uses a completely different set of motor skills, if you know what I mean. Oh, yes. I mean, totally different. Like you said, that side to side and singles to doubles and quick feet and how be able to actually, I think, without knowing I was doing it, um, probably understanding my body and um, how much, you know, I could move, how quickly, how I could not. Um, but I think also for tennis, especially the, the mental game of tennis or per se golf um, is obviously, I'm sure you know, is I think just the hardest mental game that you can probably have because sometimes you are so alone out in that course. So, so many things can sneak in and, you know, growing up, um, you know, they did for me. And so that, I think the mental training in a sport like tennis is, um, you know, so much different and unique and, and higher. And um, it can prepare you for those team sports where you actually have people kind of um, backing you up when you're struggling. At the start, you mentioned how you're old school. And I think you and I graduated in the same year or around that same time, uh, different states, but same concept. So what was the culture like with high school athletics as you were making your way through tennis, basketball, and softball? Um, you know, it, it's sad to say that I guess I was old school. I think just things have changed so much more where, you know, now the the pressure to get recognized, um, the, the pressure to maybe play college or get a scholarship or say you got a scholarship um, is just so unique compared. I didn't, I didn't know any different or know any better in um, the way that I was raised or my family situation. Um, you know, we just, I played because I played. And so I think high school sports at that time was also that we wanted to be good. I was, we were very good in high school for basketball and football and I competed um, in the state tournament for tennis and softball um, and yet went undefeated for basketball two years in a row except um, when it came to making it to state so I just we we're still very very competitive um, in everything that we did it just the pressure was different I think um, individual pressure was different um, you know I think the team pressure was still there it's just um, society as a whole and culture has maybe changed a little bit and you know the way that um, that's coming off not all families and not all situations but it's just different. And on top of that, there was no Instagram, Twitter, or any social media channels uh, to amplify all of these athletes. And not to say there's no purpose for them. Uh, I'm glad they're around because it helps me in, uh, get familiar with a lot of athletes I would not have heard about otherwise. But I remember growing up, it was a big deal if you had a kid going to Minnesota, but the culture surrounding sports and women's sports, you're right. It, it's completely almost completely different than what it was 15 years ago. Yeah, it's changed in a very, very short, short time. Um, and, you know, being able to tweet that you got an offer is a, is a, is some, a big deal for some people. But for a lot of my players that I've had right now lately, too, it's not. Um, they keep it private and they don't need to tell anybody. And I think a lot of my players actually have done that. Um, and it's just very much a family thing. So, um, but yes, it's, it's just different. And social media has changed a lot of that. Um, so, and that's where we sit. So it's a matter of managing, um, and also just educating about it and, you know, kids figuring it out along the way. That being said, what did you enjoy most about your time in high school athletics? Um, I think the, I mean, I think it was just, I got to play so many different things and I always go back to the relationships. You know, I don't remember this, but, you know, doing traveling basketball, my mom said I was the one always organizing where we were going to go for dinner afterwards um and so I just the relationships that I had during that time um and you know the struggles and all of that just obviously you know I mean it's cliche but makes you know puts you where you are I um I look back and you know like I said we um I had two years of we were undefeated in the regular season um for basketball my sophomore and junior year of high school we were ranked one or two in the state um and we lost both years to make it to state and we, we were ranked all through my high school and um you know I always look back I think one of the greatest things that I enjoyed was now looking back and now we were able to actually complete an undefeated season and win a state championship um something I always wanted to do as a player but was never able to do but I was in that moment um you know to be able to help the team that I coach now be able to do that and 
um, you know, looking out, I can say that it was much more enjoyable and memorable getting to watch them do it and watch them complete it um, than it probably would have been for me to do it as a player. So, um, you know, just I think being older now and, you know, looking back to see how those things influence us and helped me get to where I am today with my family and also with coaching um, is obviously, I think, the, the best part to look back um, on and kind of a cool, like, mind-blowing moment that that happened, I think. That's an interesting point you bring up. And I know what team you're talking about, the 2017-18 Eastview team that did go undefeated, beat Hopkins to win state, and how you said you enjoyed that moment more than you would have if you had made that run as a player. So why do you think you found more excitement, more joy you know, watching a team? You were coaching, so you were involved, but you, know, you weren't out there getting the buckets. You were uh, leading – the Eastview team and so why does that stand out to you more than winning a championship as a player would? Um, I think because of the life lesson that it brought with like even me being I mean I'm 33 now but I think when we won it I was 31 and um, you know being able to that year we actually read a book that was called You're Here for a Reason the children's book and it, it goes through and I read it to my child and I immediately also thought of our basketball team and um, it was you know this book that I read to them and I read to their parents and you know kind of said no matter what happens this year um, whether your daughter plays doesn't play whether we win every game or lose every game you know we're all here for a specific reason um, you know for each other and what does that look like and what does it feel like and what lessons will we learn um, and then you know to come full circle and to be able to you know be at our banquet and I read the book again and then shared the story of my high school experience. Um, I think it was just kind of that realization of that you are here for a reason. Um, and I think um, that's what makes it so much special is, um, or better is because it's, I could finally, it, it became full circle to me. So um, it, it meant more. Um, I like to see, you know, I think those kids and that experience obviously holds a special place in our hearts. So I think, you know, as you grow up, you like to watch your kids grow up and then it's your grandkids and it's just, all of these things you have so much more understanding um, for than you, you did when you were younger. And you had to go through it when you were younger to be able to experience it when you're older. But um, it was it's such a crazy full circle circumstance um, story that that happened and we read that book and then it actually came to fruition and connecting it back to high school. It was like, wow, these, these kids on this team deserve it so much because of who they were and what they were um, that that it just meant that much more, I think. And that wasn't the first time you were a trailblazer uh, because you went to Winona State, and I believe your last year, you were part of the first team to reach the NCAA Division II tournament. So uh, what led you to Winona State, and how do you think that helped shape you both as an athlete and as the citizen and coach that you are now? Yeah, um, you know, I, I went to Winona State. I'd never heard of Winona State. I had a coach um, named Coach Carlson, who she was the assistant. Now she's at uh, Northern Illinois. Um, but call, and I was like, I don't even know where Winona is. Um, but we went to her visit and, um, you know, spoke to the coach, uh, Scott Ballard, now, and um, he's still there. And, um, you know, he kind of hit my heartstrings by saying he's rebuilding, and, you know, I want to do this. And, you know, we, you know, obviously they, they wanted me and I think it's important to feel wanted um, and go to a spot that, um, you know, you can make a difference in. And I guess that's always been, even when I didn't know it then, that was always, you know, something that, you know, lit a fire under me. And, you know, I think before I got there, they had five or six winning seasons total. Um, so fairly unsuccessful program. Um, but that made it all more exciting to say, hey, I'm gonna get to play. I'm gonna get to get my education. I wanna be a teacher great teacher school um and you know it sounds like a perfect situation um and I think I can help you know be a leader for you and so it just kind of worked out perfect um it was close to home not too close to home and I knew I'd probably get a chance to play and so um it seemed seemed like an awesome spot for me and it ended up being obviously um you know a memory of a lifetime and something that helped shape me and so what was that experience like? I've talked to a lot of Division I athletes, and they mentioned the, the time commitment, just the big adjustment period they have to go through. 
And there certainly is that in Division Two, but you don't have the same level of exposure. You don't have all these networks and publications uh, writing about you or making reports about you uh, in Division Two and Three compared to Division One. Uh, so, what do you remember from your time as an athlete at Winona State? Um, you know, I think it was um, really nice because we could still get. Uh, academic um, money and athletic money and so that helped support um, you know that but didn't didn't come with all of the same um, demands in regards to summer and so you still got to kind of be um, a little bit of a human <laughs> um, but um, you know and I think from from that and, and we were there during the time and we were rebuilding during the time that our men's team won two national championships in three years if I remember um, and we're really successful and um, we were really close with them and so um, we didn't get obviously the same media coverage, um, but you know we 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 own that and we didn't deserve it at the time. And you know it took us four years to get where we were. But um, you know I think um, it was a little bit case of you know high school it, it extended. You know where you're not getting national media attention because you're making the NCAA tournament, but you're you're getting the same NCAA recognition just in a different format. We're not you know the University of Oregon or UConn or anything, but. Um, so I think it's just, it still makes you, um, builds you the skills for being realistic for the future and, and um, being a part of a team and having all of that and still getting, um, you know, some great, you know, Winona, great facilities, great education. Um, I think a lot of what NCAA athletics is, you know, meant to be and what it's for um, was able to kind of experiencing that, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And Looking back, you mentioned not a lot of history before you got there. Your final season as a player, 24 wins, that first NCAA appearance. What do you remember from that season? And what do you think it said about all the work you, your teammates, your coaches put in to help turn that program into a contender? Yeah, um, you know, I think we got, we had a really close group of friends and people and made a very much family atmosphere um, out of the seven new players or freshmen that came in with me only one other person made it um and she's the assistant at Bemidji now um and so me and her were the ones that saw each other other through um and the I was the first person that you know signed under Ballard um the assistant at Winona right now Anna Wirtz was the second person in the next class so she was like the first you know his second recruiting class and um it was just kind of a you know a culmination of I remember our freshman year being so hard um, and, you know, he pushed us really hard because he knew what it had to do to change and turn around and losing was hard. It was my first time I've ever participated on a losing team. Um, and then our sophomore year, we were above 500. Our junior year, we almost hit 20 wins. And then senior year, obviously, we, um, you know, won and made it, you know, won a game in the NCAA tournament, made the NCAA tournament for the first time. Um, but so it was just all of these memories, you know, that I take back. But, um, you know, four of those teammates, um, from that team were in my wedding um, was, you know, I was in, participated in their wedding. And so, um, you know, big, one of the biggest things I take away is one of our teammates lost her mom that year on Christmas day. Um, and that, that's what I remember even more than the NCAA tournament. And, you know, that, that moment of driving four hours to go to the wake and do all of that. And, um, you know, that, I guess that, that helped me develop my sense of, you know, family even more and camaraderie and how I want to be as a leader and person and, and teammate and coach. You're right. The, sometimes the memories you make are more important or more lasting than the wins. Uh, and you actually gave me the segue as a coach because you spent two seasons as a graduate assistant. Then when you were done, you uh, came over to Rosemount uh, to start your high school coaching career and when did you sense that you wanted to be a coach and what led you to the Rosemount job and what do you make of that experience there? Um, I think I always grew up after I wanted to be a teacher always saying I wanted to be a coach um, you know stayed at Winona for two years so that we could really genuinely see a continued change um, that it wasn't just a fluke because of our group and that was great and um, you know came up here um, had some opportunities at college and looking and just didn't feel like they were the right fit for me. Um, I didn't, I didn't necessarily need to go to college to, um, you know, define my coaching career. And so I had, did my student teaching at Rosemount 
And so um, got connected with the coach there and I knew I was going to come up and be a part-time teacher in the district. And so, you know, not knowing anything about the Twin Cities or anything like that, um, you know, Chris Orr was like, well, we're rebuilding, you know, this is my first year and I don't, you know, they didn't win a lot last year. And it was kind of like, well, I'm, I can help rebuild. We just helped rebuild a college program. Like I'd love to be in on that. Like that sounds exciting. It, it sounds hard. It sounds awesome, you know, young and fresh. So, um, so it was that opportunity and me and Chris coached together for three years then. Um, and, you know, that was great because we, you know, we were like family. We're still friends um, with them and their family and their children and, you know, watched him have his children and he's watched me have my children. And so, um, you know, it was great. And, and not knowing anything about here, you know, I always joked with him that, you know, like, well, I, I, I'm going to be at Eastview, like, just so you know, that's where I'm going to be um, one day. And, you know, he'd always joke with me back and forth. and. Um, I was pregnant the year that um, that the job opened at Eastview, and I didn't know if I would even, you know, I looked at other jobs and gotten offered jobs, and I was like, I don't, I've got a family, and I'm going to have a baby in the middle of the season. I just don't think those, you know, it's not the best fit. I like our district, and then, you know, Coach Hebert retired, and Chris Orr texted me and was like, I don't want to tell you this, but she just stepped down, you know, joking, ha ha, like, what are you going to do, and so it led me to applying, and now here we sit. And again, you set me up uh, real well because I found it amusing that you know the team you had lost to in the section final in your last year at Rosemount was the team you would coach the following year, and they had a state championship in 2014, and were used to success. So you know your background was all about building up. Uh, programs that didn't have a lot of history. Now you're going to a school that is known for it, at least ever since I've started covering uh, the Lightning, uh, going back to Paul Gates uh, many years ago. So mm -hmm. what was that transition like where Eastview was already established as far as what they could do in girls basketball? Um, you know, I think during the three years with Rosemont, I think we ended up in the section final and that was kind of like, okay, we're on our way. Like that, you know, I've helped start what you know Chris was going to go finish so it was time to um you know try something new and you know coming to Eastview then it was you know I think the thing was coach Kiebert and everyone else had already you know set up such a great culture of the uh, um, effort and work and the process was there and so you didn't have to uh, um you know establish that like we maybe had to um in other places that we had been you know the expectation of this is this means something um but from there you know a lot of it was I you know evaluating you know, who's still there and what does it feel like and what was the culture and how can I continue to mesh my culture and what I want into the culture that's already in existence. Um, you know, and so that's, I think a lot of it was just observing for the first, you know, four months of just like, okay, what does this mean to them? Okay, well, like now how can we adjust it to, um, you know, to, to work with what I want to do and what looks differently and, and, and so on. And they had, the year that I came in, they had lost a huge senior class in Maddie Giebert um, and Sam Trammell and, you know, Hannah Matoxin and had all these players. Um, and so we, we actually um, had graduated a lot of people that year. And so it was kind of a nice, I think, you know, it was new for everybody um, just because so many roles were going to be so different. So it was, um, so it was kind of, it was exciting and fun and, you know, no one thought we were going to be much of anything because we had lost all those seniors. And then it was, you know, Molly, Anderson at the time, no, Casper, I was Casper, okay, well, like Casper at the time, it was like, well, who's, who's this, like, we don't even know who she is, and she's taking over, and so I know there was a lot of people who doubted, um, you know, us, and even my ability um, with coaching, and our coaching staff, so. Eastview, they're a regular at state, you know, you had a couple of chances to win state, and won in 2018, and the, what did that say about the culture, you know, what, you've learned as a coach at that point where you know, you're this stranger to this Eastview community and you know, it didn't take long for you to find a rhythm. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, the hard work of all the players is definitely, um, you know, obviously number one, you still have to have players who have talent to, to still be successful and win games. Um, but, you know, I came in, um, my coaching philosophy and my is very much, you know, transformational and, 
um, purposeful learning and, and all of these things. And that, that does take time to adjust to, um, you know, especially in the world, like I said, of, you know, who's being this scholarship and this scholarship and uh, am I going to score a thousand points? Am I going to do this? And, um, you know, that took time to get used to. Um, that's, that's not always easy, but, you know, we, we had a really eager group of freshmen when I first came in who really listened and were sponges and soaked that in and listened to it and loved it. And it turned and transformed, um, you know, I think that group. And, you know, as soon as, you know, you show them that you care, not just say it in the way that you can, you know, you can get people to buy in um, and not buy in, but just listen and care as much as you care in those regards. And so, um, you know, I think that just was a good transition and we were able to still be successful and, um, you know, and just things and, and that worked out really well for me. Um, that, but that's my coaching style and my belief system and, you know, what I share with them and what I try to teach them. And, um, you know, I think they could see quickly that I practice what I preach. You know, I'm just not talking and just to sound good or look good. It's, that's usually the way that we try to, um, you know, build relationships or memories. You mentioned, or we talked about the state championship team, it may have been a surprise to the casual observers because Hopkins had Paige Beckers and she was making a name for herself. Um, you had a solid team as well. well Macy Giebert, uh, Megan Wallstad had won Miss Basketball that year. And as you were making your way through that season, when did you feel like you know this team had a chance to make that kind of a statement? Um, you know, I think I think we probably figured it out. Well, and we knew from the beginning that we would be pretty good. Um, a lot of girls on our team that I think are really great basketball players um, didn't necessarily get the same uh, looks or recognition during the off season, um, you know, which whatever teams that they were on. And so um, I think we believed in what players they could be. Um, and once we started to see them, come to that and like fill that role like an Andrea Abrams um, who during her um, you know final couple of tournaments during the summer was playing maybe like a minute and a half and you know no one even really knew who she was but all along I think we knew who she was and she knew who she was and um, once we started to see that confidence continue to grow it was just like okay let's just keep having fun and we're gonna really learn and um and I think once we, it was about January, we started reading a book um, and just realizing that, um, you know, we're going to care about, care about our process. And once I saw them, like, eyes light up and every game was like that and they just really enjoyed each other and they enjoyed the success of their teammates more than themselves. Once that, like, lit in their eyes, I was like, oh, this is, this is going to be fun. Like, this, not, not easy, but easier to coach because it, they just cared so much about um, each other and you know we still had our issues or things to work on but it was it was so different than a lot of other years in that regards because that's the hardest part to do is to get um, girls to just want what's best for other kids and you know they just they grew up and matured so much and as soon as we saw that hit it was like oh okay and you know I, I a lot of people think the Hopkins win over Christmas winter break was probably a big one or an establishing moment I mean, I'm going to be honest that I didn't, it, it wasn't, we didn't act that way. Um, you know, I told them before the game, I was like, when you win today, um, you, you walk to the end of the line. Like you do not celebrate like this is a big win because you deserve to be here and you deserve to showcase what you have. And so every single girl after that game was excited, but it was very much like, you know, where I've seen other teams who beat big teams and they jump in each other's arms and it's a state championship. And that wasn't our waterfall or our state championship or our, our perfect moment. And so I think they just, everything I asked, they just were sponges and kind of completed. So I don't know, that's a long winded answer, but I, I think running through January, it was like, wow, they're, they're really fun. And it's good that you say that. And of course you face them again in March in Hopkins, but again, treating that game like any other game. And when I've covered uh, contenders, whether they were undefeated programs like Hopkins or the Johnson boys from 2010, you know, that's a philosophy treat every game like any other, you know, the next one on the calendar is your biggest one of the season. And so then it doesn't allow, or it doesn't lead it to a situation where players get caught up in the moment, but you did get to face Hopkins again in March. And I'm guessing there was a lot more celebrating that time. So that state championship, 
you know, Hopkins, they always make it tough. And that's one reason why those games are always fun to watch. Uh, what do you remember from that game and how Eastview was able to pull it off? Because I remember reading some headlines where other folks had their doubts. Uh, you didn't, obviously, and you know, scored a big win for the program. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, our girls, as, as much as they were very humble that year, um, and we tried to ignore any publications, um, it was, you know, I, I know um, there was in the newspaper in our semi-game, we played like Bull North, and, you know, they were itching to play us. And, you know, I think, you know, we took offense to that um, in regards to we're still the number one seed in the state, and, you know, we're still undefeated, and people still think, um, that were the better bet. And I think, um, you know, that made it uh, our girls a little bit calmer, but also gave them a, a little chip, um, a little like, okay, well, let's, let's go out there and prove it. Um, and so going into Hopkins, we knew that somehow we felt like we were the underdog. Um, you know, most people were saying, well, we're going to be Hopkins again. And Hopkins, and they're great. I mean, they're an amazing program, off awesome coach, um, you know, Paige. It's obviously phenomenal. Um, and, you know, but going into that game and our team meeting beforehand, like, we just still kept everything routine. Like, same pretty detailed scouting report that they could all buy into and were educated on throughout the whole year. Um, and, you know, then it was, we always do a quote of the game and players, you know, get to pick it. And they picked one about, you know, it, you know, takes how long, you know, to chop down a tree. It's not going to done in one act. It's like everything you've done up to this point is prepared. And, you know, I looked them straight in the eye and I said, we could, we might lose this game. And it was, you know, very much like, a, and that would be okay. But like, no matter what, this is our last game. And no matter what, like, you know, just go out there and live for your moment. So I think, I think those memories of that, of just, you know, kind of going in and seeing them first five minutes, you know, my 13. And everyone was probably thinking, oh, and see, here it is. This is what we thought. And so, like, to battle back and to get it within three points by halftime. And, you know, so many people stepped up. Um, you know, so many end ones. And you see them running to each other. Or when you see when something goes wrong, uh, when I've rewatched that game and we talk about mental toughness, I don't see almost none of the girls ever say a word to the ref in a complaining manner. If something doesn't go their way, they run down the court and pick each other up. Um, if you watch, and I bet there's – seven high fives on the way of, oops, you know, you traveled or you turned it over. Um, and so I, I remember those, like, wow, that was insane. And then they just followed, for the most part, the scouter report really well. And so um, I think it was a real awesome moment. I watched that game and share it with, um, you know, our teams now of say, look at how many mistakes there were and then look at how they were able to come back after them. Um, and how can we learn from that now? And I feel like this question could merit an entire show uh, it, on its own. But over the years, whether it was the state championship run or even this past season where there was a lot of learning, maybe not the level of success you're used to, but you've gotten to work with a lot of players at Rosemount and at Eastview as a coach. And as I said, just too many to list with the time we have. But what have the players, past and present, what have they taught you? Um, you know, what haven't they taught me? <laughs> I was actually just thinking about this. No joke. It was about my daughter. And um, anyway, um, you know, I think um, they've taught me a lot about how um, we can still be old school. Um, now, since we talked about that, I guess I'll say that. Um, that if, if you give them um, a connection or an olive branch, um, I think they want to soak it up. Um, I think a lot of you know, kids or this generation uh, gets a bad rap or, you know, they'll say, oh, well, they're just out for themselves or they're selfish or they're this. And I think um, the biggest thing is that they've learned or they've taught me is that, you know, that people can change, people can grow. Um, and that I think a lot of kids are, you know, really want that connection and really want that support and really want to do, um, you know, what's best. Um, they just maybe weren't taught how to get there yet you know they maybe just didn't have that impact um or didn't you know maybe hear that along the way and so I, I think it just has proven that you know they're adaptable um and I can be adaptable and that everyone really has their own situation and story and so just to be a better listener um and then a better um continue to have good ability of you know reading what's going on or what's wrong in a certain situation and um you know also sometimes when to let go you know, it's hard for me as an adult, like I just, 
you know, people want to give a lot. And, you know, sometimes um, it, it takes some years of maturity too, to get in the right spot for some kids. But, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the stuff that they've taught me, but they've, they've also taught me on the basketball court because I give them a lot of control and practice. And I'm like, Hey, what do you want to do? What does it look like? How does that look like for you? How does that feel? And um, just knowing how much, you know, I guess giving them power, how much um, power then it gives the team. And so just kind of been a fun ride to watch them fly. Absolutely. And, you know, I go back to just uh, reading a story with, you know, the reception of Michael Sheridan, I think one of your assistants, and then, you know, you have a Miss Basketball winner and Megan Wallstead, and then you had Sierra Herber, I think, if I mm -hmm. said that right, a plays a game a with while. one eye and doesn't bother her a bit, but just so many different types of inspirational stories, you know, from, you know, the Miss Basketball to the fact that, hey, you might have a condition or something that others might discard you for, but you still go out there. And so I think, as you said, <laughs> Eastview is a reminder that even in the midst of all of this attention that we give to athletics now and these players that most, if not all, understand there's a world out there. Yeah, very much. And I think, you know, this this year we um, are the book, the children's book I read was After the Fall, which is Humpty Dumpty. And um, we just had our Zoom banquet and it tied in so great with, you know, where we're at right now and that it might be really hard for them because we didn't win a lot. And, you know, we lose our second leading scorer and only, you know, second only returning starter to an ACL. And then we lose another senior um, to a shoulder displacement. We lose another starter to mono. I mean, it was like one thing after another. And, you know, I just said they kind of kept getting back up. And that lesson right now in the middle of COVID and everything that's going on is way more than, you know, like I was like, don't feel discouraged. Like you got back up. Like we're going to be fine. You're going to be, you're going to be where you want to be again. But it's, it's just this greater world life lesson that it's like, man, how crazy is that? That that was our year. And now look where we're sitting in the middle of, um, you know, a pandemic of where a lot of people are going to need different things and different anxiety and stress are, you know, occurring. So it was um, full circle all over again. So it was pretty, pretty good. Now, I know you just have a few minutes left with us, uh, but what are you excited about as you continue to learn and grow as a coach? And what are you looking forward to uh, whenever we can play sports again? Uh, yeah, I know. I tell them all the time. I'm really excited to see them. Um, I love summer. Summer is like my favorite time with, with the group. Um, and um, I'm just really excited. I, our incoming freshmen, so our last year eighth graders and freshmen were kind of the first class that I started with. They were fourth and fifth graders when I first came in. So I feel like I've really seen them grow. Um, so I'm really excited um, to continue to see all these groups kind of grow. I mean, Cassidy, uh, Carson, um, is finally a senior and it, you know, she was the first eighth grader that was moved up. Um, and so we've got all these different fun classes that bring their own uniqueness. So I think I'm just, I'm really excited to see how people have grown during this um, pandemic and, you know, to just get back out there and listen to our playlist and, um, you know, to get working again to, to you know, that the world isn't um, stopped. And, you know, just, just keep pushing that we're, you know, we're hopeful for a 2021 season. And, um, you know, I just, I think there's so much potential and growth in the youth that we have and, you know, the, with the returners and leadership that we have coming back that, um, you know, I, I'm really excited for that. I, I think most people are, um, you know, it's, we're still considered kind of unknown and, you know, restarting of when I first took over of, well, I lost all these seniors and, and we have, but, um, you know, that, that's okay. It's just new lessons and new um, things that will build them for the future. So. Well, thanks again, Molly, for taking time out of your day to speak with us. And I can't wait to hear uh, the uh, new sets of stories you'll be sharing over the next year. And who knows how much longer after that, but uh, I always enjoy covering Eastview games and, you know, just catching up with you is a, a part of it. So looking forward to doing that again when it's safe to do so. Yes. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. Molly Casper, head coach of the Eastview Girls Basketball Program. You'll see here on the sideline whenever it's safe to play sports again. We hope it's soon. And if you want to be a guest for a future program on Mic'd Up Sports, virtual or in person, just hit us up at tsbtelevision at gmail.com or find me at social media, the Mike Peden on Twitter and Instagram.
With that, thanks for watching another virtual edition of Mike Up Sports.